I am reading from the third chapter of 1 Corinthians, the very first verse. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Now you that are listening to this broadcast, I have read that whole second chapter of 1 Corinthians. But I prefer to use this first verse as a text. Paul is relating to a church, a church at Corinth. And I want you to know that this is a church that talks in tongues. Now don't get mad at me and don't turn that radio off. Keep it on. Do you know you can talk in tongues and still be carnal? Just because you are a member of the church doesn't mean you are spiritual. Every one of us have a problem with that old nature. Brother Clendenin has been dealing with this in the day service all week, I know. But I'm going to put my two cents in it. This is an inexhaustible theme. God is looking for a man. Now, when I use the terminology man, I'm not referring to male and female. We are all sons of God. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Somebody said, how can I be a son if I'm a woman? The same way I'm going to be a bride and I'm a man. So let's get that thing settled right now. We are. There is no sex to God. There's neither male nor female. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither Jew nor Greek. And there is neither black nor white. We are one in Christ. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? Now Paul here is letting us know. He says, I have not seen. And yet we're trying to see it. I have not seen nor ear heard what God hath pre prepared for them that love Him. You can't see it with the natural eye. But He hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. We are a spirit creation. And if we are going to receive anything from God, we've got to receive it through the Spirit. Most preachers deal with that mind. You cannot receive anything through your mind. You've got to get it into the heart. And we have reduced this thing to a mental thing. If we can get you to quote certain things, it'll happen. No, it won't. For with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or deliverance. You've got to have it in your heart before it comes out of your mouth. I can sit down and talk with you and I can tell what you have in your heart by what comes out of that mouth. Are you listening to me? Now, you didn't sign your name to some church book. You didn't just join a society. You didn't shake a preacher's hand. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a new birth. This is a creative act of God. You must be born again. And every one of you that are listening to this broadcast, there is a new birth that has taken place. We're always looking, what do I have to do? Nothing. You had nothing to do with your first birth. And you ain't got nothing to do with your new birth. He did it all. Come on, 
on, shout amen, somebody. I said He did it all. He died on Calvary. God was looking for a man who will be totally dominated and controlled by His Spirit. That's what God's looking for. I want to be that man. But there's always something getting in the way. Who is it? I knew that was my husband. I know it's that rascal living with... Uh Uh-uh. Look in the mirror. That's the rascal getting in the way. That self. That carnal nature. This is the thing that has to be done away with. Have you noticed the terminology that I read? And that's the reason why I read that whole chapter. In this chapter it says, The natural man receiveth not the things of God. Who is the natural man? That's the man that is void of Christ. That natural man, that's you. You cannot receive anything from God. Now I'll tell you, this was awakened in my heart by a young man who was 27 years of age, a cripple, uh, wearing a 50-pound brace from his neck to his feet. Cerebral palsy. He had diseased lungs, diseased kidneys, a diseased heart, three chambers functioning only in his heart. He was a spastic. And he said, I... I am retarded. My mind is retarded. My body is crippled. But he said, my spirit was not retarded. My spirit was not crippled. Thank God he reached out in that spirit. And in a split moment of time, God gave him a brand new mind. Gave him a brand new body. And today he is alive, completely healed by the power of the living Christ. Oh, hallelujah. This is what I'm trying to tell you. That if you're going to receive a miracle from God, you've got to receive it through your spirit. That spirit that you have, you've got to get it into your spirit and receive it. Paul said that natural man can't receive the things of God. They are spiritually received. And yet every one of you remember when you were a natural man, you sit there in the pew and you say, Show me, preacher, and I'll believe it. God said, You believe it, and then I'll show it to you. We always got that cart before the horse. The natural man wants to feel something. That natural man wants to look and see something. But the spiritual man takes God at His Word and said, If God said it, He'll do it. And if He spoke it, He will bring it to pass. Can you shout, Yes, somebody! This is the area that I want to deal with tonight to help move you into that place where you can live in the Spirit. Paul said, if you live in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Is that what he said? We've got to learn to live in that realm. People in Pentecost, they think you have to be knocked out with your tongue hanging out, laying on the floor. I'm in the Spirit. I'm in the Spirit now. I said I'm in the Spirit now. I am a spirit being. I was born of His Spirit. I can eat a quarter pounder in the Spirit. Can you shout amen, somebody? I'm trying to make it look ridiculous. This is what I'm talking about. You have been born again. You have been born of His Spirit. He has transformed you from death to life. Sin no longer has dominion over you. You are dead alive under God because of what He's done in your life. Hallelujah! 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 Talking about that new birth. You can experience this tonight by learning how to receive it through the Spirit of God. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. Hand me my Bible. Bert, we. I just wanted to come down here and see how these flowers looked. 
Don't they look nice? You don't mind if I preach down here, do you? I'm reading from this first book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He is talking to a church. Now these people were converted. They are saved. They're children of God. He's not talking to a bunch of sinners. He's talking to saints. You sure getting quiet on me? He said, I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to communicate to you spiritual things, but you cannot understand spiritual things. He says, you are yet carnal. I don't even like that word. It don't even sound nice. Carnal. Carnal. That means we are still minding the flesh. You say, you mean the flesh that I got covering these bones? No, I ain't talking about that. That's, flesh is that old you. You cannot educate the flesh. There's only one way to get out of carnality, and that is death. You gotta kill it. We're going to have a murdering service tonight. <laughs> I'm going to bring it down so you can understand this thing. You read the story of David, and before David was anointed king, Saul had to be done away with. The Spirit of the Lord left Saul, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. David was that new man. That's what God's looking for, that new creation. The la one of the last acts before David was anointed, he went out, Saul went out to fight against Agag. Remember the story, Agag. He's a descendant of the flesh line. The Amalekites, or the Amalekites, whatever you want to call it. Esau. A type of the flesh. God has always had this problem ever since He made a man. Aren't you ladies glad now I'm saying man? God has always had this problem. Abraham was the father of every one of us that believe. He believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness because he believed. A man 90 years of age and God said, I am going to make your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sands of the sea. And Abraham believed that. I said he believed that. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. This is what God is looking for. He's looking for a man that will believe him. And there's only one way you can believe Him, and that's through the Spirit. You believe what that Word said. If God said it, He'll do it. And if He spoke it, He will bring it to pass. Can you shout Amen? amen. Hallelujah! How many of you remember before you got saved? Why, you didn't have any trouble whatsoever sinning, did you? Wasn't it easy? It was a natural thing. I mean, you said, you never had any trouble with this flesh until Jesus Christ transformed you. Then all hell broke loose. Why? Because you became a new creation. The spirit man has come alive. And now that that spirit man has come alive, now the flesh is warring against that new man. Now you go back into that Old Testament... Abraham tried to work ahead of God. Sarah said, now I'm too old to have a child, so why don't you just go in and lay with the handmaiden, my maid. Go in there and lay with her. You don't mind me talking plain to you. It's in the Bible, so I can talk this way. 
And Abraham didn't have to tie him down. He went into her. That's man's nature. That's that old flesh creeping up. Can't have a seed through you, then we'll try old Hagar. Can you shout amen, somebody? And there was a child born to Hagar. Now that child was just as much Abraham's seed as Isaac was. That's the trouble. We're always trying to help God out. That is the flesh. I'm talking to you church folks now. Some of you won't even let God fill people with the Holy Ghost. You want to help them out. Say that, that, that. My, my, my. And that ain't nothing but the flesh getting into the thing. God don't need any help. He can do it all by Himself. Woo! Beginning to feel it now. Let me get back that old rascal, Abraham. He's our father. Now, God reprimanded him for what he did. Isn't that right? And he said, I told you, your seed will be through Sarah. All nations will be blessed through Isaac. And God supernaturally gave that woman supernatural strength close to a hundred years of age. And I want you to know God can renew your youth. Well, we might have one of them services one of these nights. How many of you could stand a youth renewal service? But do you know God? Now, Sarah made the 11th chapter of Hebrews. That's the Hall of Fame. I mean, these are people that excelled. And it said, Sarah received strength in her body that she was able to reproduce and gave birth to Isaac. Now listen. That little boy that was living in Abraham's house, there's no problems. Everybody loves a baby. I don't care whether it's black, white, brown, red, or blue. Everybody loves a baby. And that was a home with that little boy in there. Until Isaac got there. And when Isaac got there, all hell broke loose. And Sarah said to Hagar, Out! Hit the road! And take the little one with you! I'm bringing it down so you can understand this thing. There was no problem. Sarah had no problem with that baby being there until Isaac was born. You had no ba no trouble with this flesh until Jesus moved in. Then when Jesus moved in, there became a warfare. You had a battle on your hands. Every time you go to do right, evil's present. Have you ever been there? My God, I better quit going to church. I can't live right. But I'm coming to tell you, you can live right. It's going to be Jesus living on the inside of you. He said, I'll walk in you. I'll talk in you. I'll be your God. You shall be my people. But it's going to have to be a total commitment to God. He wants every part of you. He's not going to dissect you. He wants all of you. Can you shout praise the Lord? Now, Abraham didn't want that boy to go. That's his son. God had to reprimand him and said, Listen to that woman. Oh, why did he have to say that? He said, You listen to that woman and send them out. God gave a promise to that child. Now, that's where all that trouble's going on. Over in that Middle East, they've been having trouble ever since Abraham messed up. He had no business going into that tent. Can you shout amen? And I'll tell you, if you don't learn how to live in the Spirit, you're going to have all kinds of trouble all of your life. That flesh will keep poking its head up, but you've got to keep that flesh crucified and put Him where it belongs, and that's on the cross of Calvary. Jesus not only carried my sin, He carried Shambok. Shambok died. Nevertheless, He lives, but it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth on the inside. 
Now I'm reading from this first book of Corinthians, chapter 3. And I've just been reading just one verse of Scripture. Paul said, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I fed you with milk, not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. Now there's nothing more revolting than a retarded Christian. Don't turn the radio off. I said there's nothing more revolting than a retarded Christian. It's time to grow up. It's time to mature. It's time to learn how to live in the Spirit. Paul's talking to a church where they excelled in gifts. I mean, they talked in tongues all the time. Every time they came together, they talked in tongues. Wasn't no time to preach. Paul had to put a limit on them. He said, when you come together, let it be by two or at the most three, and let one interpret, and then shut up! How many times have you heard people say, Woo, we had a time in church. Didn't have time for preaching. Well, if you didn't have time for preaching, you ain't been to church. This Word takes preeminence in every service. This is God's Word. Can you shout amen with me, somebody? And Paul was dealing with a people who were going around saying, I am a Baptist. I, I mean, uh, I am of Apollos. I always get that mixed up. I am Assembly of God. I am Church of God. I am Catholic. What are you? I'm Holy Ghost. Man has come in. You see, man has messed up what God started. I know some of you ain't going to like it, but we messed it up. And we put our little framework around it and put you in a pen, call it a sheep pen, and we don't let you out of that thing to mingle with other sheep. God said, other sheep who have I who are not of this fold. I don't care whether you go to this church or not, if you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, you are a child of God, you're a member of His body, and we are kinfolk! Shout yes, yeah, somebody! Woo! He said, you are carnal. Now hear me. If you're carnal, can't get anything from God. There's envyings in the church. Murmurings in the church. Always talking about somebody in the church. I know, I'm losing folks now. Well, have a nice trip. I'm going to preach anyway. Folks don't like to hear it, but I'm going to, I want you to move into a realm of the Spirit. I'm going to get my eyes off a of man. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. I am not going to follow a man. I'm not going to live my life because my pastor lives that way, but I'm going to let God have free expression in this life. He is my Lord. He is my God, and I'm going to let Him live in me. Hallelujah! How can I, how can I get out of that carnal nature? There's only one way. You can't pet that old man. You can't stroke him. You can't appease him. There's only one remedy. That's crucify him. I started a story, but I didn't get to finish it. Saul, God told Saul to go get Agag and kill him. Isn't that right? Destroy him. I mean, kill him. Do away with him. Everything. Saul didn't do it. He conquered him, but he saved him alive. 
save the best cattle. He says, we want to offer them to God. He disobeyed God. Listen to me. God is looking for a man that will be obedient to Him. Obedience is better than sacrifice. This is what he's looking for. Samuel came on the scene and heard the bleeding of the sheep and he said, what is this my ears hear? Oh, he says, your people did that. And he said, what's it? What are you doing with Agag alive? Bring him out here! And he took the sword and hewed him to pieces. He did what Saul was supposed to do. Now hear me. You and I must be identified. There has to be a murder. I mean... A crucifixion. Maybe that's a better word. When Jesus died on that cross 2,000 years ago, I placed myself on that cross. When He died, I died. When He was buried, I was buried with Him. When He come up out of the grave, I came out with Him. But it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth on the inside of me. Hallelujah. I am a spirit creation. And this is what God's looking for. Only through the Spirit can we have a revelation of that truth of what He hath prayed, what He hath revealed to us and what He hath given to us. And we must have that revelation of truth only through the Spirit. Not through the mind. Not what we learn from others. But what God has said. And He's looking for a man and a woman that He can direct. He said, natural man, carnal man, spiritual man. I know what it is to be natural. I know what it is to be carnal. And every one of you listening to my voice know what it is to be carnal. But I also know what it is to be spiritual. Can you shout Amen? Paul said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but they walk after the Spirit. I mind the things of the Spirit. I'm led of God. I want to see people delivered. I want to see them set free. I want to see them move into a place where they can have everything God's promised them. Paul said, I come to you not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but I come with a demonstration of the Spirit of God and with power that your faith might not stand in the intellect or in the wisdom of men, but that your faith might stand in the power of God. And this power of God can only flow through that spiritual man. If we're going to demonstrate that power, Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. And not only these works, but greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. You are that spirit man. Jesus lives in you. He walks in you. He talks in you. When you come to a situation where somebody needs help, it is Christ in you that brings the victory. Can you shout Amen? Charlie, you weren't here when I when I said this, Jack, you weren't here when I said this. That man we went to visit in the hospital. I got it right here from his wife. They took him down today and couldn't find any trace of leukemia in his blood. God healed that boy, Bob, down there in that hospital. What was it? We weren't there in our own name, but we went there as a representative of Jesus Christ. Marched into that room in the name of the Lord and said, Devil, you operate here no more. We are the sons of God and we're going to set him free. God performed the miracle and brought life to him. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord? Spiritual man. I want to be that man. There has to be a crucifixion on that cross. The death blow. God ain't going to let you do it. Man ain't going to kill himself. He'll just wound himself. You place yourself on that altar and God, He'll strike the blow. He strikes at the heart. And He restores you as a son of God. Raise your hands and shout Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
at first book of Corinthians chapter 3. I've been dealing with this for the past four days. I'm going to bring it to a close now. 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. Now, I don't want to talk about that carnal man. I don't want to talk about that natural man. But you that are listening to this broadcast, if you're not saved, you are a natural man. But I want to see you move into a place where you are totally led and governed by the Spirit of God. You need that Holy Ghost. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And if sons of God, then we're heirs of God. If we are heirs of God, then we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You don't know what belongs to you. The devil has made a bunch of paupers out of God's people. You listening to me? I'll never forget some years ago I was preaching in Chicago. And I told this illustration, I believe on Trinity, but it will bear repeating. It's a beautiful story. While I was out there in Chicago, an enterprising reporter had an idea. And he went around and visited every banking institution, not only in the city of Chicago, but the environs. He come across an idea. He wanted to find out how much money was left in those banks by somebody that died. Left somebody in the will, and it's there unclaimed. They don't know it. Did he have a striking story? Do you know that he found enough money left in the banks of Chicago to pay off the national debt? Their unclaimed, just accumulating interest upon interest upon interest. Somebody that died and left a fortune, and people don't know it. And he published the names in the paper. Not a tabloid, but a full-page newspaper. And it took two full pages, three weeks, to publish all the names. In alphabetical order. They hooked me for a newspaper every day. I didn't read no sports page. I didn't read no headlines. I headed for the inheritance section. I mean, I was preaching for 20 years in Chicago. And I was looking for a name that looked like Shambuck. I didn't bother with the A's, the B's, or the C's, but I headed for the S's. I was looking for Shamrock, Shamshack, Shucklebuck. I was looking for Shadrach. Anything I have ever been called, I looked down that thing, because if there's any bank holding any of my money, I want it! Don't look at me so sanctified. You just like I am. Well, you can tell by looking at me, I didn't find no name. But they got money out of me every day for a newspaper. But the second day, I got me a sermon out of this thing. There was one man who saw the name of his buddy. His buddy was on welfare. Mayor Daly was the mayor at the time. And he went out to his buddy's house and said, Hey man, you got money in the bank. He said, You crazy? He said, You know I'm on welfare. He said, Yeah, but somebody died and left you something. He said, I never knew anybody was rich. He said, I never had nothing and never will. He couldn't get his friend to go down to that bank. You know what I said? He sounds like my church folks. They don't believe anything you tell them. <laughs> Woo! His buddy went and got the writer of that article and took him out to his friend. He said, I researched this thing. That's you, man. Go on down to that bank, sign your name, and you got it. 
He said, this is an April Fool's joke and I ain't playing. He said, I was born poor, I'm going to die poor. I said, now I know he's a member of my church. Got the evidence and still won't even believe it. The editor of the newspaper went out. He tried to convince him. Couldn't convince him. And they had this little by word in the newspaper on the front page every day. And guess who saw it? Mayor Daly. He said, if we're giving that guy welfare and he got money in the bank, he said, this is his last day on welfare. So he said to his chauffeur, get the car ready. Got that chauffeur-driven Cadillac and went out there. He didn't say, good morning, how are you? He rang the bell and said, get in the car. I read this in my paper. Mayor Daly took him down, had him sign on the dotted line, and when he signed, he became the recipient of five million dollars. That's what I did. He paid back every dime he had out of welfare and put it back in the city. He still had money to spend. He had enough to spend. He couldn't spend it all in a lifetime. But you see, he befriended somebody 40 years ago, and that man put his name in the will and died, and he was ignorant of it. Didn't know that he left him money, and that money was in the bank, just gaining interest upon interest upon interest and upon interest, and piling up and piling it up until somebody brought him the good news. Well, that's what I'm doing in your city. I'm bringing you some good news. Guess what? I found out somebody died 2,000 years ago and left you something. Woo and it's been compounding for almost 2,000 years. And guess what? I found your name in the will. You're there. You're there. You're there. Woo. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you're a son of God, you're an heir of God. If you're an heir of God, that means everything Jesus owns. Shambach is part owner of that thing. Can you shout yes? Church, we've been walking around like a bunch of paupers. You have your, ch your chin hanging on your chest. Look like an accident on the way to happen. But I come to tell you, you are somebody. Get them shoulders back. Get your head high. You are a son of God. God said, I'll bless you going in. I'll bless you coming out. I'll bless your basket. I'll bless your store. Everything you set your hands to, I will bless it. I'll make you the head and not the tail. You shall lend and not borrow. Shout yes. Ah, this isn't for the natural man. This is for that spiritual man. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And God will open that word to you and show you. And when you find out your name's on a will, what's the first thing you want to know? How much? You hit it right on the head. What do I got coming? All you got to do is turn to the book of Ephesians and you'll find out you're not a pauper, but you are a son of God. Hallelujah. All those spiritual blessings God has given you. It's time to get saved. It's time to be sanctified. It's time to nail that flesh to the cross. It's time to have a resurrection. It's time to be filled with the Spirit. It's time to walk in the Spirit. It's time to live in the Spirit. It's time to let the world know that God has a people that will be led by His Spirit. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Are you trying to make me quit? Well, I quit.
I am going to read from the 12th chapter of Hebrews and the 11th chapter of Hebrews and couple two verses together. Verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Coupled with the sixth verse of the eleventh chapter of Hebrews, but without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I believe in this particular scripture that I have read in your hearing, and you that are listening to this radio broadcast, I would like to suggest that you read the entire 11th and 12th chapters of Hebrews. You will find recorded in that 11th chapter an expression such as this, By faith, Enoch. By faith, Abel, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, through faith Sarah, by faith Isaac, and by faith Jacob, by faith Moses, by faith the harlot Rahab. God mentioning all these men who have excelled in putting faith to work. They knew how to use that faith. And now in this 12th chapter, and I don't mind telling you that I believe that in this 12th chapter, God is trying to get our attention off of the individuals of that Old Testament and get our eyes on Jesus. He is the author of our faith, and He is the finisher of our faith, and He wants to operate that faith through you and through me. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? We can't be Abraham, we can't be Isaac, and we can't be Jacob. God was looking for a man, and He couldn't find it in any one of these. Jesus had to come down and take upon Himself the form of this sinful flesh, and He lived a life from the cradle to the grave, and He pleased God. And I come to tell you that you and I can please God by allowing Jesus Christ to come into this life life and have full expression in you and full expression in me and you and I can have the same kind of a faith walk that Jesus had. Can you shout praise the Lord with me? Looking unto Jesus. He is our prince leader. He is the one that we're looking to. If you recall when Jesus took his three disciples up on that mount of transfiguration. Peter, James, and John. And when they arrive there, here comes Moses and here comes Elijah. Can you imagine these three Jew boys when they saw Moses and when they saw Elijah, they forgot all about Jesus and got carried away with these ancient prophets. God had to come forth and thundered His voice once more and said, This is my beloved Son. Hear Him! And I, oh, Moses and Elijah vanished out of there and they saw nobody but Jesus. And I come to town to tell you that Jesus Christ is the answer to every one of your problems. Can you shout amen, somebody? And I want you to know that you and I can have the same kind of faith that Jesus had. He operated faith. He was a hundred percent man of faith, but He was also God in the flesh because He received the anointing and the power of God in His life. He never performed a miracle the first 30 years of His life. I want you to hear this because this is absolutely important. He knew that Word. He taught the Word. He kept doctrine.
preachers and lawyers spellbound when he exhorted that word. But he never opened a blind eye. He never unstopped a deaf ear. He never healed a cripple. Not one miracle was performed until one day while he was walking down the dusty road to a holy baptismal service where John the Baptist was baptizing. And all of a sudden John saw him coming and he turned around and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Here comes Jesus walking into the water and he said, John, take me down under the water. I need to be baptized. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy to touch the shoelaces of your shoes. He said, I need to be baptized of you. He said, suffer it to be so. John took him down under that water and when he come up out of that water, the Holy Ghost came on him. Now, somebody said it was a dove that came on him. It was the Holy Ghost that came upon him in the form of a dove. And I want you to know this is the very thing that Jesus needed to perform the miracles that He performed. This was the beginning of His earthly ministry. When He was filled with the Spirit, all of a sudden the heavens opened and God the Father spake. This is the first time He heard the voice of His Father. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You want to please God? Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But they that come to Him must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He was driven of the Spirit, Mark says. Matthew says He was led of the Spirit. But I like Mark's Bible. Mark's Gospel says He was driven into the wilderness to be tested of the devil. Some Christians don't like to be tested. They don't like the trial that comes. But I want you to know this is how you know you have faith. When that test comes because you know how you're going to come out of that thing, you are not the conquered one. You are the conqueror. You are not the victim, but you are the victor. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And you can eyeball the devil and come out victoriously just like Jesus did. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me? Three times that devil attacked him in the, in the physical, in the mental, or the psychological, and also in the spiritual. He said, if you be the Son of God, I'll tell you that made the devil mad when God was bragging on him, this is my Son. This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, if you're the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He tempted him in that physical. He could have made bread out of those stones, but he's not going to give in to the devil. He's not going to listen to him. He gave him the Word of God and cut him down and put him where he belonged. Took him up into a pinnacle on the temple and he said, Cast yourself down if you're the Son of God. It's written that He'll give His angels charge concerning thee, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone, and in their arms they'll bear thee up. He said, Satan, it's written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God took him up into a mountain and he said if you bow down and worship me he said I'll give you everything the eye can see he appealed to him in the physical appealed to him in the psychological and tested him in the spiritual but Jesus cut him down it says then the devil leaveth him and angels came and ministered unto him and he went out of there opening blind eyes unstopping deaf ears casting out devils raising the dead, demonstrating the power of the gospel of Christ because He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me somebody? Hallelujah! 
Ah, uh, Jesus is the one I'm going to look at. I said, Jesus is the one I'm going to look at. In that 11th and 12th chapter of Hebrews, verse number 3 of that 12th chapter, or verse number 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrews 11:6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hear me, friends. You that are here with me under this tent, this is the first time this tent has ever been in this part of the country. And I come to tell you that the Word of God is truth. And if you are going to receive a miracle, you're going to learn how to put faith alive in your heart. You've got to believe that He is. A lot of people believe God was. They believe God will be. When God called Moses to preach, He said, Lord, who shall I say sent me? He says, you tell them, I am that I am. Oh, hallelujah. God is a God of the present. He is a right now God. God is concerned about your life. He is a miracle worker now. He wants to save you now. He wants to heal you now. He wants to sanctify you now. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost now. He wants to liberate you now. God is a right now God. Can you shout amen with me, somebody? Oh, hallelujah. 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 Over in that 11th chapter, let me go back over it again. I like this. In verse 33, it says, Who through faith they subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they obtained promises, they stopped the mouths of lions, they quenched, they quenched the violence of fire, they escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness they were made strong, they waxed violent in fight and turned to flight, the armies of the aliens and women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection through faith. Can you shout amen? amen. Oh, I'm talking about subduing kingdoms. When I read this, it thrills me, brother. They subdued kingdom. That means me. That means you. There's still some kingdoms out there to be subdued. Are you listening to me? It was Joshua. How would you like to try to fill the shoes of this great man of God who's going to succeed Moses? Moses, that mighty deliverer that brought three million Jews out of bondage and out of captivity and left them right there at the borders of Kadesh Barnea and he refused to take them in. Finally, God said now to, Mo to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. God said, I'm calling you to do what Moses couldn't do. How would you like to fill them shoes? How would you like to follow that act? I mean, the great man of God that Moses was separated that Red Sea with that staff in his hand, got water out of a rock, rained bread and, and, and he rained protein on the people, gave them, gave them bread and gave them protein in the wilderness. And now Joshua's called to do what Moses failed at. He said, every bit of ground that the soles of your feet tread on, you shall possess the land. Hallelujah. I come to tell you, if your parents didn't do it, you can do it. Are you listening to me? I said, if your church don't believe in it, you can do it. If your pastor don't believe in it, you can do it. Because that element of faith is there. You can put this thing to work. Let every man, let every devil be a liar. But let God be true. I want you to know you can have whatever you can subdue. 
He marched in there. Thirty-one kings were destroyed. I said, thirty-one of them. God said, I've given you the land. There's a battle out there. This ain't no place for, a place for the timid. It's no place for you that are sissies. If you're a sissy, go serve the devil. God's looking for men. This is a conflict. There's a real enemy out there. But God called you to conquer that enemy. And you've got to stretch out on His Word and lay down some footsteps if you're going to receive what God gave you. That Word of God is truth. Subduing kingdoms. Joshua subdued that kingdom. And he told the sons of Ephraim, he said, if you're not satisfied with what you got, go on up there and cut you down something. Whatever you got faith to do. Whatever you can find your hands to do, take what you can. My God, I like that. Whatever you want, you can have it. There's always somebody trying to stop you and tell you, that's not for today. Well, it may not be for today for you, but I'm going to get it anyway. Let every man and let every devil be a liar. If I can find it in the book, then it means it's the same for me today. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today. And He'll be the same tomorrow. Shout yes! David was anointed by God to be king. Subdue the kingdom. I believe he's talking about David here in this scripture. Talking about Joshua. Subduing kingdoms. You say, but what can I subdue? You've got a kingdom right in there. A kingdom of God. There's that old self nature you need to bring into subjection. Are you listening to me? This is the biggest problem in the church. Your problem is not your next door neighbor. Your problem is not your boss man. But your problem is that thing you look at in the mirror. It's that six foot hunk of flesh. Or that five foot five hunk of flesh. It's got to be subdued. Self got to be destroyed. It has to be nailed to the cross. you got to die. you got to be buried. And then a resurrection has to take place. So Christ can walk and live in you. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me somebody? Oh, it's being repeated today. Missionaries going over into countries. I had a young man call me from Africa. I don't have time to put this on the radio. But he called me from Africa. Told me I was over there with him not long ago. Had 12,000 members in his church. I hadn't been but two months. And he said, Brother Shambach, got 18,000 already. He said, my God is growing. I said, I'm going to pray and ask God to raise up some evangelists from Africa and send them to the heathen United States. My God, we need a revival in this country. Can you shout amen, somebody? There's still nations that need to be subdued. God wants us to take our own cities. He wants to take our own states. He wants us to take our own country. Revival is needed in America. And God is looking for men and women who will have faith to bring revival to this country. Can you shout amen? Turn around and look at somebody and say, we're going to have revival. And God's going to start it in me. Tell somebody else that. Say, God's going to start it right here in me. He's going to start it right here in me. This is what faith can do. Old John Getty, that great missionary to the New Hebrides, stayed for 30 years in that country. In the New Hebrides. You won't find him there any longer. He went on to with his reward. But all you'll see is a tombstone. And on that tombstone it says, When John Geddes came to the New Hebrides, there wasn't one Christian. But when he left, there wasn't one sinner. He subdued a kingdom. My God, I like that. Don't you like that? Say, oh, Brother Sambach, I'm the only one saved in my apartment complex. Goody. My God, subdue that nation. Subdue that kingdom. What do you think God put you in that block for? You can have whoremongers on one side of you, drug addicts on the other side. You can have the night crawlers on the other side. But you can come out smelling like a rose because you've got the power of the Holy Ghost in you and God will give you the whole 